So as of you guys knowing, quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence, recently just got a deal extension after his rookie expansion with a five-year, $275 million deal. Probably already being paid, the uh, being already the second highest earner in the AFC West. And that contract will be there until he's going to be a free agent come tw uh, when he turns 32. That will be tw 2031 with a cap hit of $25 million when he turns 26. Currently, Trevor Lawrence is around 31 years, uh, like 25 years of age. So still has a, a long, illustrious career, only making the playoffs only once. In his career over the first season with Doug Peterson, Jacksonville kind of fell short over in wild card after not having a good second half of the season, being illustrious favorites. After a massive comeback, but they lost like six out of their last seven and only picked up a win against the Carolina Panthers, closing off against their division rivals against the Tennessee Titans. Could people say this is a major overpay? For probably a team that's missing out after Christian Kirk literally left a, uh, uh, Christian Kirk and how much money he got uh, lo uh, losing one of their primary receivers out of, uh, I, I don't know how much of a major threat Calvin Ridley was, but he did play a majority of the season, had a thousand receiving yards while having a decent receiving uh, yards after reception with a decent but below average success rate. They do have an exceptional running game. Travis Etienne is obviously a good running back with uh, Tank Bigsby. We don't know how much they're, as they're still going to have with the Ernest Johnson that they had from the Don Denver Broncos that had yet to get any minutes played. Evan Ingram's kind of hitting his ceiling over in the tight end position. And not really the big defense that kind of had him in the AFC title game, but that was when they had Blake Bortles as quarterback. And now they got somebody with, that's a bit younger and probably has more of a higher potential ceiling to be a Pro Bowler over the next five seasons, if possible, be an All-Pro selection. He did play 16 games over a sub-500 record. In the 2023 season, 21 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, with 4,000 yards, but that's above the minimum. He did make a Pro Bowl. Lawrence is deserving of his money, and with a high praising, uh, you know, you know the, the 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 chosen one criteria being called the prince who was promised, being that guy to kind of lift him out of the dark ages of mediocrity, especially over a division for the taking. That should be for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Derrick Henry's all the way over in Baltimore for a potential championship contention. Uh, we know what's going to happen because Anthony Richardson is still in this rebuilding Indianapolis Colts team. And Houston Texans are favored, highly more favored over their offseason their off season moves to be a potential contender in the NFL to take over the AFC and lead over the division with C.J. Stroud having an outstanding rookie season. Compensating for that for Lawrence could be, you know, a bit lower, you know, lower of a ceiling. But most most NFL teams kind of have a patience sentiment over trying to stick with a quarterback over the long term. And Lawrence shown that he could be pretty exceptional in the pocket. Movement out of the pocket is pretty decent. He's good over in red zone plays. He's a dual threat over in the red zone. Especially when it comes to third down options. I don't feel like he's the, at least the, uh, currently still, if we're counting even off individual talent instead of team success right now, the, the Jaguars probably have uh, the second highest chance to be a threat right now. The take over a second best position, but probably a wild card spot. Even though it's always been pictured that the AFC was pretty stacked 
But if we're looking at the circumstances, Kansas City is probably going to steal over the division. Harbaugh got to develop over, but obviously help over a rebuilding Denver Broncos team, a mediocre but competitive Las Vegas Raiders team after even losing all pro running back Josh Jacobs. So that's a major loss over their sentiment. And having a notable running game will make you lose a spot, even at how complacent the the running uh running position running back position is in the NFL. So it, it could be favored that you'll still get your favored uh wild card teams, division leaders like the Bills, Texans, Chiefs again. Or it could be the Miami Miami Dolphins with the Jets probably sneaking in over a wild card spot. D'Amico Ryan has a lot of uh, excitement and probably the highest expectations stealing over with the vision with this new looking Texan squad that is on paper the most exciting in the NFL right now when it comes to expectations, talent, and overall depth that the fans are knowing. But it's mainly over what people is going at. It's mainly on the offensive side of the ball that you know you're getting with this team. When it comes to who they have with uh, Tank Dell having an exceptional year, Nico Collins having an all-pro season in just his first year, picking up all-pro wide receiver Stefan Diggs in the offseason after not a lot of, uh, not a lot of uh, you know, exceptional playoff success with the Buffalo Bills, picking up Joe Mixon from the Jackson, from uh, from the Cincinnati Bengals with Damian Pierce now over in the second string, but he's obviously not the exciting running back that he used to be. Dalton Schultz, that's a productive tight end for the team with uh, some young, exciting uh, pass blockers. But uh, most people are probably saying that this is just going to be a pretty bare minimum average average uh, secondary. And their secondary has held over the fort when it comes to pushing over second chance plays when their pass rush has always been the backbone with Will Anderson Jr., and Daniel Hunter, Christian Harris, that's good, w- while picking up Al Shayer. And they even got Desmond King pitching over with Jimmy Ward, that used to be a Niner, and Derek S- Stingley, that's been a good young secondary. But this is obviously going to be a ball hawking defense. Field position is going to be probably the biggest priority here for this Texans team. Will they be good? Will they be great? I've seen exciting teams on the offseason that turned to shit like the Philadelphia Eagles before. But, you know, they're up there. The Texans got every NFL fan's attention as of late. So it wouldn't surprise me if they possibly make a good run or sophomore fever hits up. And that's when second year performance doesn't really compensate for an exciting second half run while the biggest offseason hype that the Jaguars have is picking up backwater Bills receivers like Gabriel Davis and picking up former starting quarterback for the New England Patriots, Mac Jones, around the offseason while getting regurgitated Niners trash like C.J. Beathard. That's been in the uh, been in the Jaguars' backup role since like 2021. So I I don't know what's gonna be the factor here. If Trayvon Walker can step it up, they got Eric Garmstead. They obviously have a more notable pass rush in the division with you know very questionable secondary reads. And knowing them, they're going to be highly reliant on moving around the ball. But that was their struggle last season. So can Trevor Lawrence compensate with the money he's been given? And there's been quarterbacks that knock it down the park like Patrick Mahomes. But we already know Patrick Mahomes deserves that money. He already won a Super Bowl prior to the contract extension. It's not like Donovan McNabb where you have a promising quarterback for the future. But no results make you deserve that money over in the stronghold so that's buyer's remorse when you're given extension you're supposed to be expected results so can trevor lawrence kind of uh, live up to that expectation or will it actually blow up on the jaguars face that they blew the cash on a guy that's possibly not even going to last over his contract 
So let's see over for what you guys think in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe for more over in the DST show. That's it for me. Let's see what's uh, going on later in the offseason. We got summer camp and we got the NBA Finals. We'll probably go over Game 3 later in the weekend. Game 4 should be tonight here on Friday, uh, 8.30 Eastern. And you'll see my opinion on probably if uh, the Dallas Mavericks get eliminated or say they survive for a possible Game 5 to avoid the sweep.